OK, then we are ready to continue on uh, the topic of uh, forecasting from uh, chapter 2 in the textbook. Uh, also, remember that uh, assignment 1, which was presented on um, last week and uh, also it's uploaded in Fronter, uh, should be delivered next Tuesday or by uh, at least by uh, Wednesday morning. So I have it when I come to work on Wednesday. And this is a pass or fail assignment. Uh, also, next Tuesday I will present assignment number two, which is uh, uh, an assignment which also will be a part of your final grade. It will count for 10%, and it will be uh, evaluated and graded by percentage correct. So you might, for example, have 90% correct, and that will count for 10% of the final grade. So it will be converted to a uh, letter grade when you have finished with all assignments and, and the exam. Uh, remember from the last lectures we had looked at different uh, ways of uh, making forecast uh, and forecasting methods are in general uh, based on uh, historical data. Uh, you know about uh, the history, you know about the data points, what happened in, in the last periods and you are using this information to create a forecast what will happen in the future. How much will the, the sales be in, in the future for your product? So we started by looking at different methods for stationary series. If we have the timeline here and you have this, uh, the, uh, the demand in, uh, in the y-axis, you have historical data which can look like this, a bit random no uh, dependencies, at least dependencies uh, like we can see. Uh, and uh, uh, by these types of problems, when you have so-called stationary series, you are creating a forecast that you will uh, uh, expect to continue in the future. You should try to find a line that will represent the expected sales for the coming period. So if this is today, you should try to find that particular number, which is one uh, number uh, formed by, by analyzing the, the historical data, which could be the forecast for the next period and the uh, coming periods and so on. So we expect this to be the, the demand in any coming period until uh, some new information are, uh, are received. And for this stationary series, we looked at two different methods. One was called the moving average. easier to do it like this. Go to slide number 10. Uh, and this is the formula for the moving average. Just take the arithmetic average on the n most recent observation uh, and then <coughs> make the forecast by uh, adding a certain number of, uh, of demand for the previous periods and then divide by, by the number of periods, which gives us the average of the, the last uh, demand for the last periods. And then when new, a new uh, data, new data uh, will be received in the coming periods, you just recalculate and find the average between uh, the n newest periods. So then you will replace the oldest data with the new data when you get some, some new information. So this is one way, and the decision here will be to decide the number of periods, the n value, uh, which should be included in uh, uh, in this uh, in this method. How many periods should you use to find the average? Uh, we looked at another method called uh, exponential smoothing, which used a formula like this. So that new forecast here. forecast for one period will be the demand in the previous period, most recent observation, multiplied by this Greek letter alpha, which is uh, what we call the, the smoothing constant or a smoothing parameter, which is 
some kind of importance of the most recent observation compared to the importance of the last forecast. And this alpha will always be a number between 0 and 1. Uh, so, uh, well, quite common value is around 0 0.1, 0 0.2, but uh, you can also try. I uh, uploaded uh, an Excel sheet last week where you can try different values and, and see how the forecast will, uh, will react when, uh, when you are uh, uh, trying different values for, for this alpha. So here the new forecast will be the alpha value multiplied by the most recent observation or the demand in the previous period, t minus 1. If you are forecasting for period t, then you should use the demand in the previous period and <coughs> add 1 minus alpha multiplied by the forecast for the same period. So here, alpha will, uh, will tell you about the importance of the last measured demand um, in relation to the importance of the last forecast. So, in this case, you might get a new data which is higher than the previous uh, forecast and then in this case, you will upload uh, or uh, you will uh, upgrade the forecast to a certain level, which might be higher than the previous forecast. Or if the new data is below the previous forecast, you will need to uh, you it will be adjusted down for to some certain uh, to some degree, which will depend on the alpha, the smoothing constant. <coughs> And then we also looked at some other method uh, which is to be used when you have dependencies between the data. You don't have a, a totally random uh, points uh, like this, but you can, by analyzing the previous data, try to find a trend if you have uh, uh, historical data which looks more like this. You can certainly see that here there is a trend. You can expect to sell more in the next period compared to the previous one, but still there will be some kind of variation. And then the, uh, what we were trying to find was the line which was best fitted to meet uh, to the, the least squared method from the uh, from the actual data points. So here we should try to find a formula for this line which will represent the sales in at least in, in the near future. So here if this is the last this, this might be today last measured data then we can try to make a forecast by just continuing this line with the same gradient into the future until we get some new information that makes us uh, makes it necessary to adjust the, the line like this. And uh, we looked at uh, uh, last week we looked at uh, the method called uh, uh, regression uh, analysis. Which is uh, described here. And then we were trying to find the formula for this line and uh, the formula for a straight line if we call this one the d hat, which is the uh, computed value of the demand for any period. That means that we are looking for the value on the line, not the exact data value for, for these uh, periods because it's not uh, possible to find a straight line which will meet all the, the data points here. And here we are talking about linear uh, regression. So we will find the formula for this line where the demand uh, or the expected uh, demand in any period will be one value A plus one value B multiplied by the time variable. So here the a value will be the point where the line will uh, meet the y-axis. 
the B value will be the gradient. How much will the, will the line increase or eventually decrease from one time period to another one? What is the gradient or the slope of this line? And to create a forecast, we can say if this is period number 12, then we have a value here found by uh, the t value uh, 12 and uh, the uh, found values of, of the constant a and b. And then <laughs> if we want to make a forecast, we should just continue this one to the next time period, number 13. And we can use this value as a forecast. And then, uh, of course, this will be uh, depend on that we, uh, we will uh, suppose that the growth is continuing at, this at the same uh, level, in, in this case here. So we will have the demand, which uh, or, or the um, uh, expected uh, demand will be the A value, the constant A, which is the interception with the, uh, the y-axis, plus the B value, the gradient, multiplied by the variable T, where T is the time period. And to find these values, A and B, we first can try to calculate B, which is the expression SXY divided by SXX. And here is the formula for the SXX and SXY. And they are using the least square method to find, identify the, the line which is best fitted, which will minimize the squared distance from the exact data point and the line. So these formulas are found by using the least uh, square uh, distance from, from the line to the data point. And this is the way to find the B value, the gradient, divide the SXY expression to the SXX uh, expression. And when we know the gradient, it's pretty easy to find the uh, interception with the Y axis. Just use the average demand, which will be the midpoint of the line here, and continue in uh, the wrong uh, direction here, or to, um, towards the, the a-axis, with the same slope as phone here by b. So when we know the slope and we know the midpoint of the line, which will always be the average of the data, then we can just follow the line uh, uh, to the y-axis by the slope multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2. Find the midpoint and then just follow the line until we meet the y-axis. So this is a way to use regression analysis to identify a formula for the line that is best fitted to the measured data point. And then we can use that line for uh, uh, yeah, this was not a very good uh, figure, but uh, that line can be used to just continue uh, and, and uh, into the future and then make a, uh, a forecast for the coming periods. So this was the, uh, as far as we came, came last week. And now I will try to show another method that can be used when you have trend in the data set. And this is also called Exponential smoothing is related to the exponential smoothing method, wi which we already have seen for the stationary series. But now we need to include one more level. And this is now called the double exponential smoothing, or the Holtz method. And it doesn't really say very much on this slide, but I will try to explain it uh, further on the, on the Blackboard. But here, double exponential smoothing. Uh, which Holtz method is only one example. There are different variants here, but we will learn about this one. Then it can also be used to forecast when there is a linear trend present in the data, and then the method requires separate smoothing constant for the slope and the intercept. An intercept will be the end of the line, end of the trend line. So if this is the last data, or, or the last period, last month, you might have the actual demand at this point, but the intercept, which we are interested in for making 
uh, forecast is actually the end point of the line, not the last data point. This is a very common mistake on uh, uh, exam problems and so on, that people uh, that uh, students will use the last measured value instead of the intercept, the, the, uh, the value which is represent the end point of the line, which is not the same as the last data point. <coughs> so now we will introduce two smoothing constant. We have the alpha, which is similar to the single exponential smoothing as we saw uh, for the stationary series. This will represent the importance of the value of the series, which is the value of the series is the, well, the, in, uh, the, the end point of the line like this. But we also need to include another one, the beta, which is the smoothing constant that will represent the importance of the trend. Both these are, uh, are the smoothing constant. which will have a value between 0 and 1. So here we have the alpha, which will represent the end point of the line, the series, and we will have the beta, which will represent the gradient or the slope, which is the how much the line will increase or eventually will decrease from one period to the next. And then we have, according to previous data, we might have uh, found a model which will uh, represent the current status. We have a value for the endpoint, the S, so-called S value, the series, and we also have a value for the slope or the gradient, which is called the G value. Uh, and by using these values, we can just continue into the future with the same gradient and assume that the, uh, the trend will continue at the same level. But now, when we get some new data, we might get a new measured data point in the next, point, uh, next month, which is up here, which means that we, we actually sold much more than we expected. Then we will adjust the forecast, and here is where the <coughs> smoothing constant and the value of the smoothing constant will come in because they will decide how much each of the two variables here, the gradient and, and the, the series, how much will they be adjusted to meet or to uh, for the new measured data uh, compared to the previous forecast. So then we have to adjust and then might get a new line which have a larger gradient that will end up uh, in another point at this level. And similar, if you have a new data which is lower than the line, then we need to adjust down to uh, according to the importance of the new, <coughs> new measured data which will be decided by the smoothing constant here. So here we have two formulas which will be used when we are updating this method or this forecast. We have the S for period T. S will then mean the series endpoint of the line. And for period T, the S value will be found by using the smoothing constant for the series, the alpha multiplied by the previous measured data, the previous data point, plus 1 minus alpha, <coughs> multiplied by the previous forecast. And we remember that to find a forecast, we will use the previous value of the series, and then add the gradient. Continue the line with the same gradient, the same growth for one new period. So the forecast will then be the, um, 
uh, 1 minus alpha uh, multiplied by the s of t minus 1 plus the g of t minus 1. And similar, we also need to update the gradient, the slope of the line, because as we saw here, when you have a larger value, then the gradient, the slope, will be adjusted to a larger value. We'll not continue this way, but we might get another, uh, another graph, which is more adjusted to, to the new data value. And similar, uh, when you have a smaller value than actually the, the forecast, then we need to adjust it downwards. So we will have a new formula for the gradient, g, for <coughs> period number t, and then we use the other smoothing constant, multiplied by the difference between the two previous values of the series. S of t minus S of t minus 1, because this will be the same as the, um, as the, the difference between this point and the new point of the, the series, adjusted to the new value, the growth from the previous to the current period. And then we have to add 1 minus beta, to and, uh, and multiplied by the previous gradient. So here, we will have two different smoothing constants which will describe the importance of the, of the new data point, in this case, the new actual demand, uh, compared to the previous forecast, which is formed by the endpoint of the line plus the, the gradient, the ser series and the, and the gradient. And then we will have a similar formula for finding the, the gradient, multiplying the smoothing constant with the difference between the current value of the series and the previous value of the series, plus 1 minus beta multiplied by the previous gradient. And then, of course, to find the forecast, we have the formula <coughs> f of t, which is the sum of the series value and the value of the gradient. And if we have t plus tau, if you are for forecasting further into the future, we can just multiply the gradient with this value of tau. So the forecast will be the value of the series, the end point of the line, continued for a certain number of period with the same gradient, plus tau multiplied by the current <coughs> value of the gradient. So these are now the two formulas used to update the values of the series and the gradient, and the forecast will then be the sum of the series and the gradient for a certain number of periods. If you are forecasting for the next period, then the tau value will be 1. So then it's the series plus the gradient. <coughs> so then we will go through one example, which is on page 77, example 2.5. Uh, which, uh, yeah, the topic here is about aircraft engine failures. Uh, use the same data, which is also used in an example for the stationary series, in example 22. And we have the decision, the va values for the smoothing constant, is in this case said to be 0 0.1 uh, for both of them. So let's now assume that we have values of 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 uh, and the exact values of smoothing constant uh, well it's not easy but uh, they are found by well trial and failure and try to find out what is actually best fitted for your particular uh, product uh, or in, in your market so there's no 
uh, exact answer that this should be the value of the smoothing constant, it will be different for different types of, uh, of problems in different products, different markets and so on. And then just experience will show what is actually the value which is best fitted for your product. But usually this value is around yeah, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 in, in the area around that. <coughs> So, let's now assume that we have this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, problem about uh, aircraft failures and we want to make a <coughs> forecast. And let's use a table. Let's see. First, we can try to find a graph, and then let's assume that we have lots of different data points here, and we are at this <coughs> period, t. And we have found some way, maybe using regression or any other method, found out that we have a line which will end up at this point, which is the s value. And we have a gradient from one period to the next at this value. So now we have, uh, because to get this method started, we need to have values for the original or, or starting values for the series and the gradient. So in this case, let's now assume that the S0 is uh, 200 and the G0 is 10, which is the starting values. So let's now make a table where we need um, columns for the time period, the measured, the demand, the new data point, the series, the gradient, and also the forecast. So let's now assume that in time period zero, we have the S value of 200 and the G value of 10. The S value at this point is 200 and we will assume an increase of 10 from one period to the next one. That makes it pretty easy to make a forecast for period number one because the forecast for the next period, t plus tau, when tau is equal to 1, will be the series plus the gradient, which makes a forecast of 210. So, then we have a forecast, and we assume that the line will continue with the same gradient until the next period t plus 1. So this value, 210, is the new forecast. And then the first period will come, or we will get data for the first period here, and we can see that the actual demand was 200. Actually the same as the previous one. But since we are using a method for forecasting with trend, we had forecasted 210 for this period. That means that the actual value was below the line here. We had a new demand which was at this level, not this level. Which means that we need to adjust the values of the series and the value of the gradient uh, since the growth is not increasing in 
um, uh, with, with the same uh, gradient or the same slope as we expected. So then we need to update the value of the series and we have now the smoothing constant of 0 0.1 multiplied by the new demand which is 200 plus 0 0.9 multiplied by the previous forecast 200 plus 10 which is 210 of course And this will um, give us a new value of 209. So here we have updated the formula for the line, so it will now continue, but not in the same way as we expected, but to a smaller value at this point. This is now the new value of S, the new value of the series. Uh, the end point of the line, which is at the current time period. And we also need to update the gradient to be 0 0.1, the smoothing constant, multiplied by the difference between the previous series of the values, no, the current value of the series and the previous one, 209 minus 200. plus 1 minus beta, which is 0 0.9, multiplied by the previous value of the gradient, which was 10, which will now give us a value of the gradient, the new value of the gradient, which is 9.9. Uh, that means the new value of the series, 209, and an expected growth from one period to the next will be 9.9. And then it's easy to make a forecast for the next period. Use the series values of 209 and the gradient value of 9.9. .9. which will give us uh, 218.9. So, if we had used the previous values here, 200, and the gradient of 10 for two periods, we would have a forecast of 220. But since the new value was only 200, we had to readjust the forecast and readjust the expected gradient, the expected growth for, for the, the future, which means that the new forecast will be 218.9. <coughs> and let's now continue with another data. Now, in period number two, we actually get 250, a demand of 250, which means that this value will be somewhere up here. <coughs> we have uh, found that we have the expected uh, or the series value of 209 and we would expect to continue with the same gradient into the future. But now we actually get a new value which is much higher and we need to adjust the forecast, adjust the series and the gradient uh, according to the newest measured value of 250. So, let's use the same formulas. Now we have a new value here, 250, plus the previous forecast, which we remember was the sum of the series and the gradient, which was 218.9. which makes a new value of the series of uh, 
222. That means instead of continuing at this growth, we have to adjust the series to align with a higher gradient and then the new values of the value of the series will be at this point. Uh, as mentioned before, the value of the series is the end point of the line. It's not the last demand for the, the, the previous period. But of course, the end point and the line will be adjusted to meet, uh, to a certain degree at least, uh, to meet the new measured demand. And the importance here will be decided by the smoothing constant alpha and also the smoothing constant beta, which will be used to upgrade the gradient. <coughs> so now the new value of the gradient will be the smoothing constant beta multiplied by the difference between the series, uh, the values of the series, 222 minus the previous of 209. And plus 0 0.9 multiplied by the previous value of the gradient, uh, which was 9.9. .9. And then we get a new value of the gradient of 10.2. And we can easily find a new forecast, which is the sum of the series and the gradient, which will be 232.2, which is the value of the, well, will, will be the forecast if this line will continue with the same uh, gradient or the same slope when continuing from the last value of the series. And like this, we can continue. I created an Excel sheet. Which I also will upload in, in front of after this uh, lecture. And here, we can see that we can just uh, use the uh, cells here to define the alpha and beta smoothing constant, the values for the smoothing constant. And by references, we can just in this Excel sheet uh, create uh, formulas which refer to these cells. And then we can see here that the, the forecast will of course be the sum for, for this period cell G9. So the forecast will be the sum of the previous uh, uh, series and the gradient, which will be copied down uh, to the, the next uh, uh, lines in, in this uh, column here. And also the formulas for upgraded, upgrading the uh, series and the gradient is now coded here in the Excel sheet to meet the actual number of uh, yeah, failures in, in, in this case, or the actual uh, demand, <coughs> what is actually happened in, in uh, the, the exact uh, data set, the historical data. So now this spreadsheet has coded the formulas which is shown here, the alpha, the smoothing constant for the, the series multiplied by the demand, <coughs> plus one minus the smoothing constant multiplied by the sum of the series and the gradient. And here we can also easily see what is happening. I've also uh, here added the absolute error and the square error to find the MAD and MSE forecast or the forecasting error values and we can here see what will happen if we if we change these values 0 0.5 is a rather high value which means that the demand is very important compared to the uh, to the previous forecast but we can try different values here zero zero of course will then say that the 
value or the, the last demand doesn't have any importance at all. Just keep to the previous forecast. And one will be the opposite, that always the, uh, the series will always be adjusted to be exactly the same as the previous demand. So here we can see, in this example, we can see the uh, well, the development uh, of the series and the gradient value when you get some new data point here. And we can also here see that we are forecasting for a certain number of periods. After period number three, we try to make a forecast for the periods from four up to eight. So we will continue the line from this point with the same gradient further into the future. So this was uh, a presentation of this uh, double exponential smoothing, or also called HALT method. And uh, in addition to the regression analysis we saw last week, these are methods that can handle series with both a trend, uh, w with a trend. So you need to uh, you need to upload, uh, no, you need to, uh, uh, you need to uh, update the forecast by using the smoothing constant, both for the series and also for the gradient. Okay, let's uh, take 15 minutes break and then we'll continue with other forecasting methods.